Why is it considered a bad idea to be in an age gap relationship? Almost everywhere in the world this is the case. And if someone is already in a successful one, what advice do you give them in a philosophical level to ignore the haters and live happily ever after? That's from Rania. Oh, hi, Rania. How are you doing tonight? Hi, Stefan. I'm doing so great. Good. I'm so proud to be with you. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. I'm looking forward to the conversation. You know, can I tell you, I have a little bit of a weakness. Weakness? I actually got to indulge it today, but my, my weakness is gossip. Now, I know that your relationship is not gossip. It's your, it's your marriage, and it's very, very important. But I do like people's personal lives and people's personal stories, so I appreciate you calling in about this, uh, this question. So do you mind if I could ask a couple of questions to sort of get the lay of the land first? I'm open for that. All Go right. ahead. And what's the age gap we're talking about here? 28. I'm younger. 28 years. Yeah. You have out Macron. Macron. <laughs> so. I know. <laughs> I hope he didn't meet you while you were. Okay. So 28 years. Um, is he wealthy? Uh, no, he's just working and he's a middle class. I mean, he has no properties. Even his flat, we are paying for it monthly. Right. Yeah. And do you work in the marriage? At do the moment. Job? I'm still young. I study. You I, study, I'm okay. Happy. So he's paying the bills for you studying, right? Uh, well, no, I pay for them. I mean, my mother and my father pay for me also somehow, personally. So, no, he's just paying for a living and for me being with him, but uh, not a big deal. No, he's not paying for my studies because we live in Germany, so it's not so much money to study. It's so. close to free, right? Uh, yeah, close. I mean, 300 uh, euros per semester for six months, so it's almost nothing. Yeah. So, so he's basically paying the bills while you're going to school. I'm not meaning this in any critical way. I'm just sort of trying to get an understanding of things. Of course, he's taking care of me how I live because I'm his wife. I mean, what to eat. But it, when it comes to paying for studies, no, he's not paying for my studies. No. Right. And... Do you want to have kids? Yep, we plan to have kids. Uh, we want to have, I want to have three. It's for him. It's, it doesn't matter, but for me, I want to have three. But he's open for children. He loves to have that. You want three kids? Yep. Um, just out but of curiosity, roughly how old is he going to be if you end up with three kids? Now, sorry, but just before that, how much further do you have to go in school? Uh, maybe for another five years. I mean, because I just planning everything from you, I have to start studying from zero. So wait, you have five more years of school to go? Not school, it's university. Uh, sorry, that, that's what I mean. So five years of university. And what are you studying? So I will study maybe English. Also, uh, so I'm studying now something German, but it seems somehow too hard for me. I thought I will, I will make it, but so I'm someone who loves literature, loves languages but i will change next semester to english so i will i think i can make it so something in literature something that i don't know if it has a future or not who knows but i'm someone who has passion never give up and loves what he's doing so i'm someone who trusts himself in this field so but Rania, i think I'm just sorry just out of curiosity you said you wanted three kids right well not exactly i mean i just want to have three kids in the term of 10 years or something so it's no, not no, really... i understand that i understand that so why why would you want to go to university for five years now if you want to have three kids soon uh well i don't want to have three kids soon i just want to have one kid now but it's for me if i stay at home and have no uh academic studies so it's for me it's like <laughs> you have not done nothing with your life so what i mean you've done nothing with your life you're raising three children. I don't understand. Why? I mean, look, you could you you could be entirely right. I'm just from my standpoint, I don't know, maybe as a taxpayer, but but why why do you want to go to college if then you're basically gonna spend, I assume, you know, and if you listen to this show, right? Home, breastfeeding, having other kids and so on, you're gonna be out of the workforce for like uh, 10 years or so and so why do all this education and then stay home and have kids i'm not sure i quite understand the reasoning 
And plus, how old is this dude going to be when if you want to have three kids starting in five years? I mean, I don't need to know exactly how old you are, but assuming you're, say, legal, like I'm not speaking to Anthony Weiner in a voice <laughs> encoder, legal. like he's he's got to be in his 50s. So plus five years for you to finish university, that's mid to late 50s, then three kids, maybe two years apart. I mean, the guy's... The guy's going to have some pretty slow tadpoles. You, you, you know what I mean? Well, we are planning to have first child soon, so uh, in sufficient this five years. So. Oh, so are you going to have your first child while you're still in university? Exactly, yeah. We're planning to do that. But why would you want to combine the two? I don't quite, I mean, don't you want to be home with your baby? I want to be home with my baby, but the problem is I don't want to give up uh, an academic degree. This is so important for me personally. I mean, I could be at home. I have no financially problems. I have a wonderful husband, wonderful home. But for me personally, I cannot just keep academia. I have to do something with it, at least. Yeah. But why? Because I have bigger dreams. I, I, I love literature since I was a no, child. No, but you, I, I mean, nobody's saying you can't read books, right? I mean, nobody's, if you love literature, then you can read all the literature you want. You can have a book club. You can read to your kids. You can do do lot. You can do online courses. You can, you know, but I'm just not sure I quite understand it. You know, maybe I'm crazy here. I just don't quite understand why you'd want to have kids while in university. Why not do university later? Um, I don't know. I mean, it could be something that I can just wait for it one, two years that the child is a little bit older. So I don't know what will happen, but I just want to be... Wait, wait, what do you mean you don't know what will happen? What is that? I don't know what that means. It means that, for example, when I have a child, I have to make a pause, you know, uh, six months that the child has to be with his mother so I cannot go to university. So... University accepted that a woman has to stay at home. They have no problem with it. You will not be kicked out of university or something like that. So it can but, be. But hang on. Who's going to take, let, let's say that you, you're going to have to do some. I mean, German universities are, are tough, right? Because they're free. They have to have very high standards and, you know, good for you for getting in. But it's going to be a lot of work. And particularly, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm getting, going out on a limb here and your English is fantastic, but it's not your native language. So it's going to be a challenge. So. Your your husband works. He's he's middle class. So so Rania, who's going to take care of your child while you're doing your uh, your university degree? Uh, daycare that we pay for. <laughs> you're going to put him in daycare? I don't know. I mean, we have to do. Well, what do you mean you don't I... know? <laughs> this is the point of planning. <laughs> husband that can he can take six months or at least till up three years. Oh, your husband. So your husband is going to stay home and take care of your child so that you can go to university. He does not have to. No, but does he want to? Uh, For six months, it's fine. But more than that, I don't think so. So you've talked about it with him and he's like, sure, I'm happy to take time off from my career for six months so that you can go to school and I can help raise your child or our child. Yeah, for six months, it's fine. But more than that, I don't think so. (laughs) <laughs> now, um, the, the breastfeeding recommendations are 18 months, ideally, definitely a year. So are you going to try breastfeeding while you're in university? I think so, yeah. <laughs> and where, where are you from originally, Rania? I'm from Algeria, as well. so North Africa. North Africa, Algeria. What, you couldn't, couldn't make it to France? No, I'm just kidding. Um, and... How long have you been, uh, I think you're in Germany, right? So how long have you been in Germany? Three years now. And how did you get to Germany? Uh, did you, was it immigration or your parents or how did you end up in Germany? Men and him. And how did you meet? Well, we met over Facebook uh, because we were both atheists. So the theme that we met over was atheism. So we had a friend that was an atheist, it was a famous writer, a philosopher, and so on. So over him, we met each other as friends and so on, but it developed more than that. So, yeah. Right. Um, if you were a German taxpayer, what would you think of you? I mean, in terms of coming to the country, going into university, which the taxpayer, 
uh, pays for. And then like, I'm just just curious. I mean, do you think that would be a net positive for the German taxpayer or not so much? Well, I think in the same situation that we are living in right now, so I'm um, very young, um, like his daughter, in his age of his daughter and so on. So I would think that it's fine for him because he just lived in single since 15 years now he was divorced. And so it makes no problem. He does not see that he is paying for me or anything else. And also my parents are paying for me, so it's not a big deal at all. And my parents also are intellect, so they are both... Uh, professors at university. So we met somehow on an intellectual level. It was not something like, oh, please take care of me. I'm running out of a horrible place. No, my family was very intellectual, very atheists. So it's a different situation. And I think as a payer of taxes, he has to think more of what's going on with uh, with the government that is taking care of, of a lot of refugees and between Brahmi's refugees that I hate so much that it's horrible. I'm totally against Merkel and I was so so upset that Le Pen did not win. So, so yeah, tell me uh, tell me a little bit about your perception of what's going on in Germany with yeah. uh, the refugees. I mean, I, I, some of them certainly are coming from North Africa, and you'd certainly have more of an on the ground view of the people uh, who are coming into Germany. What do you think? Well, I was really shocked. I mean, like six months since I came in or something and started this, this shit with refugees and they were coming on millions into the country and just storming in and it was really horrible. And I was thinking, did I come here wrong? What the heck is going on in Europe? Why is this happening? Yeah, and everywhere I walk here in the cities, I see more people with, with hijab on, with scarves on. And I was thinking, I should really leave this continent very soon. It will be an Islamic country because I know what Islamics are. I come from such a place. I left because of that. And so what are your I concerns know. about what's going to happen in Germany? You said uh, where it's going to head. Well, I think it will head to an Islamic country in, let's say, 20 years. I give them 20 years maximum. Right. Yeah. Right. Now, his, how many children does your husband have? <laughs> he has one child. Oh, it was only one child. And you said it was he was divorced for 15 years. Was that when he met you or when he got married? No. He divorced uh, in 2002 or three, I think. And he met me in 2013 or 12. So it was a really long time after that. <laughs> right, nothing right. to do. And what does his child think? I guess his adult child is, I guess, your age. Were you saying that she has some negative views of the relationship? Yeah. And what are they? What does she, what does she think? She was thinking that it's, it's, it, she feels that she has lost her father forever and she's just jealous of me. Uh, and her father made a younger woman, a prettier woman than her and so on. That's all. Right. That's right. her fault. Yeah. Well, um, the, the issue is that when it comes to age gaps, particularly an age gap like this, I think a lot of people's question is, what do people have in common who have almost three decades difference? Now, you're a very intelligent woman. You've had, a, I would imagine, a challenging life and, and, and so on. And so... If you're extraordinarily mature, then it sort of gets you some way towards where he is in terms of maturity. If he's not mature, then he is sort of closer to where you are in terms of your physical age. But when there's three decades between, or ne nearly three decades between people, then I think people's concern is that it's a relationship based on looks, on, on physicality, on, on sexuality, not necessarily on maturity and compatibility because the question is how much does someone in a woman or a man in her early 20s how much do they have in common with somebody in his early 50s you know with three uh, almost three decades difference it's sort of hard to it's hard for somebody to, to bridge that and wonder where the connection is in the relationship if that makes sense uh, i totally understand it <laughs> yeah and I what's do. your response to that my response to that is, 
I am a person that was born to a father that was very older than her. And in an intellect uh, family, so I learned to be really mature than, than my age. I never ever in my life looked at people in my age and I thought they are the, the right person for me. I could have never ever made a reasonable, natural conversation, an intellect conversation with a, a guy in my age. That could have never ever been possible, no matter what culture he comes from. So you've sort of felt, uh, I guess what some people called an old soul, or you felt older than your, your physical years. Um, and I would assume that has something to do with your intelligence, right? Yes, I think so. And also because the age gap between me and my father. And what is the age gap between you and your father? 41. I'm sorry? 41 years old difference. <laughs> 41. Well, <laughs> I'm one to talk, so I'm not going to, I have to brush past that one. Um, and you're saying that his, his daughter is not really talking to her father because of you? Yeah, since our relationship, uh, she had problems with him, and now they barely talk. Yeah. And and it's because of his marriage to you. Yeah. Exactly. And what does she think the relationship is based on? I don't know. At first, she was saying, "I give this relationship six months, and then six months pass, and then another year, and so on." So, I mean, I have to say that in any relationship in the world, you have to get to know this person. We had problems in the first six months that it will work or not, but. We somehow, yeah, we got this working out. I mean, it worked at the end because we both understand each other. We both came to the same level of, of, of thoughts uh, in a lot of ways because somehow he was a liberal before he made me, but he met me and then I introduced him to somehow the background I come from. So he now understands what Islam is. He read a lot of books about it because of me. He was introduced to a lot of things because of me. So he grown up, I grown up, we learned from each other, we understood each other, we, we are a very happy couple and a very successful couple, I have to say. Just because you mentioned it again, and you mentioned that you were upset that Macron won rather than Le Pen, what is it that you would, I mean, we have a lot of French listeners, what is it you would like to say to the people of France about the decision that they've made? Well, I don't know what the fuck is going on in France, but I had a lot of hopes that Le Pen will win exactly like Trump did. But obviously, there are not so many, so many people left in France to vote for her. Somehow, the only people who can vote there are Muslims, which are millions there. I mean, we know that at least 12 millions are from North Africa there, and the rest are whether females who are liberals or what the heck was the percentage of female French males who are left there. I think it's very, very small. So I maybe did not see that coming. So I was somehow, yeah, <laughs> I was an idiot. So I did not see it coming that he will win because there are not so many people who will vote for Le Pen. So there are not so many people who see the truth. People are, yeah, it, it already happened. So the immigration has already won in France. So that's what I mean. I'm really upset for France and I don't know what to say. I mean, it's horrible for Europe. It's coming everywhere in Sweden, in Germany. It's coming everywhere where they took a lot of migrants. It's a very, very sad story for the Western civilization in Europe. Very sad story. Hmm. Right. So you mentioned earlier your looks. Would you say that you're um, a pretty woman? Uh, I would say so. I'm um, at least an eight. <laughs> right, right. Do do you think that the daughter may be concerned that you know exotic beauty coming in from overseas and living to some degree off her father, going to school and so on? Do you think there may be a perception that she sees you as I don't know if the phrase makes sense to you, a, a gold digger or somebody who's coming for citizenship and uh, and uh, money? Of course, I think so. And a lot of his friends also thought that at the beginning. But uh, the moment they met me and, and they have seen that I stayed with him and everything was fine, we are not some just people who are just trying it out. No, I'm someone who comes from a culture who believes the guy you marry, it's it. So he did not believe that at the beginning. His friends didn't, his daughter, everyone didn't in this society. But I think I have led them into this belief that... 
me personally, not just any woman from my country, but me personally, as an atheist, even though I'm an atheist, but I still have a lot of uh, background morality from my religion or from my society culture that uh, makes me a person who loves marriage, who value marriage, who value a future uh, stable relationship and a loving husband. Yeah. And what was the relationship between your husband and his daughter like before you came along? Were they getting along well? Did they have their issues uh, or distance between them before? I think they had a good relationship, but after all this happened, I asked him, did you really have this deep relationship and it stopped because of me? So he said, uh, I don't think that I have so much a deep relationship with my daughter before. So he thought it was just fake or she was just being nice with him because of what he did for her. It's somehow the mentality in Europe. I don't get it anymore. So I don't know. <laughs> and where's the mom, her biological mom in the picture? Uh, she was eight years older than him. And she's old and now with another guy since he divorced him. She was the, with this guy together. But is she around? Does she see her daughter? I mean, is she part of the... No, she's with a great relationship with her daughter since they divorced. And they have had, you have you met her or talked to her? What does she think of you as the I guess the second wife? No, she has no problem with me. She even invited us like a few weeks ago to come to her husband and her in her house. So she has no problem with me at all. The ex wife. Right. Well, I mean, it's it's tough. I mean, with with regards to the daughter, I don't think I mean, Rania, it can't be your problem to fix. Right. I mean, it's it's his relationship with his daughter. He's obviously known her. And, and was he, he was fairly involved in raising her. Is that right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah I so, mean, both. I, mean yeah. I, I think you can facilitate them talking, but he is going to, you know, he is going to have to try and talk with her and try and figure out what the real issue is. I mean, I, I obviously can't, can't possibly guess with any degree of accuracy. I mean, I could make some guesses, but what would that do not not much in particular. So um, yeah, he's he's going to have to sit down with her and have her unpack her heart as to what her issue is with the relationship. Uh, if was her father not dating for a long time before he got involved with you? Well, if you want to ask him, he's right here, so he will tell you written details. Okay. I hope he will. Be. Okay, so go ahead, Chuck. So really. <laughs> Hello, hello. So I got the chance to talk to Stefan Molineux. Now, now, I, now there's uh, someone who knows how to pronounce my last name. Let me tell you, that's a beautiful thing to hear. Yeah, yeah, I'm honored very much. Yeah, and thank you very much for this. Oh, my pleasure. So, so just for the records, uh, in Germany, it's now half past one. And uh, my wonderful wife woke me up. And uh, yes. Uh, Anyway, so, uh, yeah, what is the question? Oh, were you, um, did you have, with regards to your daughter, were you single for a long time before, before you met Rania? Yes, I was very, very long time single, and I was very, very fine with the situation. You know, uh, um, there is a saying here in Germany, if you can live alone, it's the best thing you can have. If you don't, it's the worst on earth. Right. And uh, so I belonged to the first version and I was very, very happy to live alone. I had um, for a long time no relationship. I had some short relationships before Rania, but um, yeah, they were only very short time. And that was it, yeah. Do you think that it's possible that you're, since you didn't have a girlfriend and, and you had divorced your wife, is yeah. it possible that your daughter feels um, displaced? I mean, this is a very obvious thing to, to I'm sure you've thought of it. But uh, in my experience, single parents can sometimes end up in a quasi-spousal relationship with children. Now, I've known more single moms with single sons, where they get yeah. kind of promoted to the man of the house. And there's this kind of spousal relationship that occurs between single parents and single children. I'm just wondering if you think that might have happened to any degree with your daughter. 
Well, uh, you have to look at that. Uh, when we got divorced, my daughter was 12 years old, and uh, yeah, we had a yeah we had a good relationship together. I had no problem with my ex-wife. It was just a short time after the divorce, but I think this is normal. And we were good friends, and everything worked very well together. And I was hang on, very sorry to interrupt, but if you had a good relationship with your ex-wife and you were yeah. friends and it was all very civilized, why not just stay married? No, because, because it didn't work anymore. Yeah, this is a very personal thing, and I think, uh, yeah, it takes too much time to tell that now. And uh, it, it was over. It didn't work anymore. And uh, it was, uh, yeah, there are always two people who, um, yeah, who be, belong to the situation. So if it doesn't work anymore, it doesn't work anymore, and it didn't work anymore. And what is your, uh, what is your daughter's complaints? Uh, has, has she voiced them clearly about what issues she has with Rania? Uh, yeah, of course, yeah, she... Uh, she has a problem with Irania. Some, yeah, you know, on the one hand, uh, somehow I can understand her uh, if I try to imagine her situation and uh, being a young woman and your father is marrying a woman that is younger than you. And uh, so that there is something... Yeah, that she has a problem with that. I can understand that somehow. Yes, but what but is the problem in specific that she has? What, what is the problem? What does she think? Does she's a gold digger? Does she think like? Does she think you're being foolish? Does she think that it's just sexual? Does, what, what is it that she has as a criticism of the relationship? Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah. These are uh, yeah, of course. As you said, as you mentioned, she thinks she is a gold digger. And uh, she thinks she is doing that only to uh, get free and everything. And uh, yeah, these are all the complaints that I hear a lot of times uh, regarding the relationship to Rania. And um, yeah, okay. Now, um, why do you think, because either she's right or she's wrong, right? I mean, <laughs> I'm just bunging in here from the internet. So either your daughter's right to a large degree or she's wrong to a large degree. Now, Rani, of course, says that you're happily married and it's lasted um, more than the six months your daughter thought that it might last. And um, I guess my question is, was there anything in your relationship with your daughter in the past, before Rania came along, that may have given your daughter reason to question your judgment? Because your daughter obviously feels, I guess, or believes that you're making a very bad decision. So she must... I would imagine, have had some reason to yeah. question your judgment in the past. You should ask this question to my daughter. Uh, but she's, <laughs> Maybe too late to call her now. But. Uh, unfortunately, not here, but uh, the only thing I can tell you is I was a very tolerant father. Yeah? And this is the moment where that I don't understand. She was allowed to, to bring everybody here. She was, uh, we shared the time with our daughter. She was, uh, yeah, you can say uh, um, mathematically one week with her, with her mother and one week with me. Yeah? And uh, so we shared this together, my ex-wife and I. We don't uh, uh, live a long distance from each other. Uh, it's very close and uh, it worked very fine. And I was a very tolerant father. And uh, I think so, so, yeah, all the things that I have experienced also with her friends, yeah. She, sometimes she was complaining she had a new boyfriend and she brought him in. And so I was talking with him two hours and then she was complaining, oh, when I bring a new boyfriend and you are talking with him two hours, yeah. And, uh, but that was a nice com complaint, yeah, it was fine. I uh, even worked uh, at the school as a theater teacher because I have a, a, yeah, an actor background and uh, yeah, it was working very fine with these young people and they liked me 
and it was was nice. I cannot say that I was a bad father at some point. Yeah. And I was, what uh, what efforts have you put in, and what have you tried to do to solve the distance in the relationship? Um. So my daughter and I, we didn't talk to each other for more than one year. And um, that was a very, very bad experience for me because anyway, so in this one year, which is not uh, long ago, and that um, I always thought about her and I thought, oh, damn hell, shit. How can we solve this problem? Yeah. And anyway, Sorry, I just talked. At, at the beginning of the year that you didn't talk, was there a big conflict? Was there a blow up or did she just were things yeah. pleasant? And then, yeah, nothing? there was a blow up and there was an, an incident uh, the, that caused this, yeah, this massive and what was uh, that? lack and it was damn. Yeah. It's somehow shameful, so Rania's watching me right now. And uh, so Rania had the idea, she said she wanted to have a tattoo. I said, yeah, go ahead and have a tattoo. And she said, wouldn't it be a nice idea if you have if you have that too? And I said, damn, yeah, I never wanted to have a tattoo in my life. But uh, so that's somehow a nice idea. And we, we, we planned that for months. And then there was one day in January. Wait, in I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just. You're in your fifties. Yes. You uh, meet I'm, a I'm hot you. young foreigner, and you get a tattoo. Did you buy a sports car too? Did you get a hair plug? I mean, no, <laughs> this kind of a no. midlife crisis cliche, right? No, this is, uh, no, this is not a, a midlife crisis. You know, I have nothing to do with that. I didn't want to have a tattoo, but then I thought, yeah, why not? This is like a second ring that you were after your marriage. Yeah, this is a this is something that, and it was a word that was uh, uh, that was, yeah, very important for her. It's freedom in Arabic, and so we tattooed that on our on our arm, and uh, yeah, so that's just what we did, and I published that on Facebook. Are you still there? Stefan? Yes, yes. You you published your sorry, Arabic yeah. tattoo of the word freedom on Facebook. Yeah, and uh, so she was complaining. She wrote me, she wrote me a message, and this message was the point. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay, I still have this message, and uh, okay. Uh, to make the long story short, the message was an insult from the first word to the last word. And I thought, no, no, this is uh, uh, this is now too much. Um, this she is was, sorry. The message was she was insulting you from beginning to end for oh. posting the. For, is it was it for getting the tattoo? Was it for posting the tattoo? I mean, what? No, for for getting the tattoo, and uh, she herself has tattoos anyway. But uh, she was really she was really upset about this thing. Yeah. And I thought, no, um, this is too much. This is uh, really a little bit too much because, um, no, um, I do not deserve that. I'm sorry. Yeah, because <laughs> to get insulted for something like that, um, no. Yeah, I mean, she, she, like most young people, is very focused on the on her peer group, right? And it may not have been a high status moment for her in her peer group when her father gets a, a tattoo of the Arabic word for freedom and posts it publicly. I mean, I'm not agreeing or disagreeing with the decision. I'm not a huge fan of tattoos myself, but as far as I'm, I'm just sort of putting myself in her shoes, I, I could see that as not a high status moment with her peers. Yeah, but anyway, I mean... Um what is that? Her father is getting a tattoo, under which circumstances, whatever, yeah. And uh, 
So why does she complain so much about that? But and, did, did uh, you know that she was going to be bothered about the tattoo before you posted about it on Facebook? She was not informed about the tattoo before. Did I she not? She, she had no idea you were getting a tattoo? No, she had no idea. No. Why wouldn't you talk to her about it? Because we didn't talk uh, very much in this time. No, no, this is before the break. This is when you had a good relationship, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah but, 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 no. Uh, no. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Since we married, they had the breakup somehow. So oh, so this is in. after she stopped talking to you? Of course. No, after six months we got married, she still, had to, she still talked to him. Okay, so, so when this is this happened? tattoo thing happening? Six months after we married, something like yeah. that. Yeah. So, but so this before start, you got married? It was six months after we married. No, no, but I'm asking for the blow up that caused the non communication. And, and this is the one. So she, the, the relationship was bad before the tattoo. Then you got the tattoo and posted about it. Yeah. So, as yeah, a father, like this is my question. So, as a father, yeah. shouldn't it be your job to know what's going to really bother your daughter? I'm not saying you have to guide your life by it, of course, right? But that's part of intimacy, right? Like, I, I can tell you this if I came home with a tattoo, <laughs> my wife and my daughter would be very upset with like I know that for a fact especially if I'd never talked about it with them beforehand now I know that she's grown and all that but did you not know that your daughter was going to be bothered by the tattoo may I say something no no this is she a question that, no it's not a question for you Rania with all due respect it's a question for the father it's a question for the father yes um, I mean uh, okay Somehow this uh, tattoo story gets now very important, but uh, anyway. Um, but this was the yeah. blow-up, right? Yeah, this was somehow uh, the straw that, ca uh, uh, that caused the camel, uh, that, that yes. brought the camel's so back. So did yeah. you not know that it was going to be bothersome to your daughter that you got an Arabic word tattooed on your arm without talking to her? Can you, can you ask this question again, please? Sure. Were yeah. you very surprised that it bothered her that you got a tattoo without discussing it with her? Yes, I was somehow surprised. So, uh, that, so that means that you don't know your daughter that well in this moment if you do something that's very upsetting to her. Now, please understand, I'm not saying you can't do things that are upsetting to your daughter, but if you don't know ahead of time that it's going to be upsetting, it means that there's a disconnect between you, if that makes sense. Okay, which disconnection is it? The disconnection is you don't know when you get the tattoo that it's going to bother your daughter. Uh, because yeah. it, the reason I'm saying this is that if you had known ahead of time that it was going to bother your daughter that much, I assume that you would not have just posted it on Facebook, right? You would have sat down with your daughter, maybe even beforehand, and said, this is what I want to do. It's going to be a permanent change to my body. Did you ever speak negatively to your daughter about her tattoos, or were you fine with her tattoos? I was absolutely fine with her tattoos. Right. She, she, but, but they were her thing, right? And I assume that they're kind of a youth thing and a sailor thing, or at least they used to be, right? So it's kind of a youth thing and it's kind of her thing. So if you had known that posting the picture of the tattoo would have cost you a year of conversation with your daughter, I'm going to assume that you wouldn't have posted the picture. You would have found some other way to break it to her. Like it wasn't worth it posting the picture if it cost you a year talking to your daughter, right? But it's not about the tattoo. <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, well, no, no, come on. It can't have been worth it <laughs> to post that picture if it cost you a year of talking with your daughter, right? I'm sorry, Stefan, but I have to say it's not about the tattoo. She called him the next morning of our wedding, the next morning, and crying and say, I lost my father for the rest of my life. So the problem began long before the tattoo story. Okay? No, I understand it's, that. Yeah, I understand that. Was, but if this catalyst... If the tattoo posting was a catalyst for him not talking to his daughter for a year, then it wasn't worth it, right? I mean, maybe you, you looked cool to some people because you posted this picture, but it wasn't worth it in terms of not being able to talk to your daughter for a year, right? So it was a mistake to post the picture in terms of how it affected your relationship with your daughter, right? Ah, uh, well, was it a mistake? Look, um, uh, the, the relationship between my daughter and me 
was somehow, as Rania mentioned, it, uh, it somehow destroyed from the moment on I married Rania. She was complaining about that all the time. Maybe I could have posted a picture of our holiday in Egypt uh, when we are sitting in the ocean and uh, that would have caused the same amount of uh, anger in my daughter. And uh, so, yeah, there was, it was for me, somehow she was looking like an incident that, uh, that makes her feel free to attack me in a very, very bad way. And so that happened then. Yeah. So you, you don't, so what you're saying is you don't regret posting the picture of your Arabic tattoo? Oh, no, I don't regret that. Why? Because it triggered a break with your daughter that lasted for a year. Yeah, but maybe 10 other people liked it very much and thought, yeah, well, it's fine. What? Uh, what, what do you care about 10 other people? We're talking about your daughter. Yeah, but anyway, what's the crime to post a picture on Facebook about a tattoo? This is nothing. And, uh, no, 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 my... but it's not nothing to your daughter. Yeah. Uh, and you can't so, decide for her what bothers is... her and what doesn't. And again, I'm not saying she's justified. I'm not saying anything like that. But what I am saying is, given that you did not talk to your only child for a year, it wasn't worth it to post the picture. And not knowing the effect of posting that picture means that you were disconnected, I think, from your child's preferences at that point or your child's state of mind. And if you are defending posting the picture, even though it cost you a year of conversation with your child, I can understand now more and more why it bothers her. Oh, yeah, this is very interesting. So go ahead. Well, you tell me what you found interesting, because I, I think I made my point. May I say something? I okay, think that but try and keep it brief. I'm trying to talk to the guy about his, to his daughter, but go ahead. It has nothing to do with the tattoo, okay? It has nothing to do with it the tattoo? And how do you know that, Rania? Because they had big problems when we got married. And the yes, relationship was... I know, you, you've said that. I understand that. I understand that. But I'm talking about this particular incident, which your husband brought up as the catalyst for not speaking to her, her for a year. Right? No, this is the day he decided, when she calls him crying and said, you did something bad, he told her, that's it. I don't want to hear this anymore. So he stopped the relationship because of this incident. Not her. She was always complaining since we got married. She was complaining about everything in his life since then. So it so was you a don't very like relationship between them. So you don't and like he her. Up since the tattoo, not her. So you, sorry, Rania, you don't like his daughter. I don't even know her. I met her. No, once. no, you are you are speaking negatively about his daughter. That she complained about everything. That she was negative. It wasn't about the yes, tattoo. The problems were before that. So, so you don't like his daughter. I don't like how she thinks of me and how she thinks that she can control her father because he gave her all. Wait a minute money. here. Wait a minute here, Anya. Yeah. <laughs> Control he her father? Her. You talked him yes, into getting yes. a tattoo in his 50s. <laughs> what are you talking about his daughter controlling her father? Wouldn't you say that you've had quite a bit of influence over him, getting him to tattoo something in Arabic on his arm? Well, it's not a big deal because it was something that it meant something for us. And it's not... No, it meant something to you. He wasn't going to get a tattoo otherwise. No, he was convinced if you would have said I'm not convinced just have it yourself I would have no problem with that but we were thinking about it since we got married as a second ring no no we you were thinking yeah. about it and he went along with it listen Rania I'm a guy and I'm not dating you and I'm not married to you right so I'm just telling you and you know your husband can tell me if I'm wrong he wasn't going to go out and get a tattoo if you didn't want it of course not. Okay, so then don't say it's a we, it's a you, and he went along with it. But since he had it, he's proud of it. Well, I don't think it's worth losing your daughter over a tattoo myself. I mean, if I had to trade between a painful, permanent skin inking, inking operation or being able to talk to my own daughter, I'd have a tough time choosing the tattoo, to be honest with you. 
Well, I don't think the tattoo was the trigger. The trigger was marriage, me, marrying me. Well, yes, I, I understand that. I understand that. But I can also understand that you have an enormous amount of influence over this girl's father, right? Well, she does not even know me and she does not want to know me. But she knows, she knows. You understand why she got upset about the tattoo is a tattoo is a mark of your control over her father. It's a brand. Yeah, but you understand that the tattoo also means that the father has the freedom to do whatever he wants with his life, marry a woman, have a tattoo, do whatever he wants with her life, with his life, and she has no control over him. She cannot tell him do this and don't do that. No, that's this apparently your job now. Go get a tattoo. Okay, I'll get a tattoo, right? But what the heck is this? Is this guy not an adult? He's even the father. He has the control to do whatever he wants with his life, with his body. So if she thinks she can tell him do the tattoo, don't do the tattoo, I'm fed up with this woman. I mean... I had a problem with him in the first six months that she was telling him she can do whatever with him. Come visit me in my house. I want to come take some things from your house and so on. What the heck is going on? I was really upset and this was one of the triggers to say I was really seeing this man not being a man and standing up for his words because he was telling her, oh, go ahead, tell me whatever, I can do it for you because you are my daughter, you can control me. But when it comes to personal freedom, okay, he is not a liberal anymore. He cannot tell to a woman, you are a woman, you are better than me. I do whatever you want, whatever you say, even you are the daughter, I'm the father. No, I'm from a culture that says, I'm the man, I do whatever they, I want, yeah? I have to stand up for being a man. So I want this guy to stand up for his daughter and tell her. Wait, wait, there's wait, hang on. Between you, hang on, hang on. You have control. to stand up for being a man? Yes, but you're yeah, a woman. You are coming over the line. You are telling me to do things. I don't think it comes up to my freedom, like who I date or what I do with my body, because he gives her the freedom. She does not give him that freedom. Right. So she, un so she look. So she understood what the tattoo was exactly. She understood that the tattoo was a sign of your ownership of her father, that you were setting the boundaries, that you were setting the rules, that you were setting. What limits. rules? If he gets a tattoo, what other rules? I don't see other rules. I see it, her rules that she's calling in the next morning and saying, Oh, Father, I feel so bad. I lost you forever. What the heck is this? Did I come from the, from the Arabic world where women are oppressed or, or, or she? Yeah. What's going on? So you have no sympathy for her perspective, right? I don't, because if my father married a 28 year old younger woman than him, I would have never ever had a problem with her if she would have been a nice person and have values. Yes, but Rania, ever. you're in Germany now. You're not in Algeria. So but the know. fact that your father in Algeria or in that custom or in that culture would have done X, Y, and Z, what does that have to do with going to Germany? I don't get to go to Japan and say, what are you people sitting on the floor for? Yeah, but there's a line between freedoms and 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 uh, telling you what to do. Obligation. She's obligating him to do what she wants, not what he wants. It, it, it was their relationship for twenty years, right? And now I know. you're coming in and saying that their relationship is wrong and it needs to conform to your culture and your history. No, I'm not saying that. That's exactly what you're saying. My no, father would I'm, never have done this. There, if I was her, I would have done this. It's their relationship, yeah, which, which was around for a lot longer yeah. than you were. Oh, who he marries. Why does she have to control that and tell him this is good and this is bad? And not just that, she has to control who he dates. So what you're saying, Rania, is they had a good relationship until you came along with your values and your history yeah. and your culture and you said that their relationship was wrong, you made him get a tattoo, and then you're worried why she, you, you can't imagine why she has a negative view of anything. I don't think bad. She has broke up with him since she, he made me. She, not me. Yes, I understand that. But you understand yeah, but you're bringing in values. You said the relationship between the father and the daughter was good. Was good and then you came in and viewed that relationship as bad 
or as poor or as a deficient or he wasn't being a man or whatever it is, right? Yeah, because, because based on your yeah, culture, hang on, hang on. Don't, don't talk over me. I'm not married to you, okay? Let me finish my point. We all right? Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. The relationship was good between the father and the daughter. You come in and you view the relationship as bad because of your own cultural lens and your own cultural history. Your family's values, let's say, from Algeria. And then you start causing trouble in the relationship. And I can, he I can hear you describing it very, very clearly. And you'll hear it if you listen back to this, which I hope you will. So then you come in with your values and the relationship after you arrive in his life, his relationship with his daughter has gone from good to absolutely terrible, virtually non-existent. But it was not because of me. No, it absolutely was because As of me. You. No, it absolutely it was, was because, because you're the only thing that changed. The, the only thing that changed was that you, and I'm trying to help you guys here. I'm, I'm not trying to cause problems here. But you, you, if you're this self-righteous and like, well, she, he just wasn't being the man and, and, and she was just whining and she just wanted him to do everything and blah, 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 blah. Then you're coming barging into this relationship in Germany that existed for more than a quarter century or so I, <laughs> before you. And you're coming in and saying this relationship is problematic. This relation, and and basically you kicked her out of the nest. You kicked her out I of her father's kick heart. I didn't kick her out of anything. I'm sorry. I did not kick her out of anything. You should She's hear yourself when you make fun of this girl. The way that you 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 have contempt for her. I have something against her behavior because her behavior is not to be uh, tolerant with. Well, but what's your tolerance? You're, you're saying that his relationship with his daughter is bad based on your values from, from Algeria. And where's your tolerance for, for how their relationship was? Do you have no sense of the fact that your entrance into this relationship has to some degree cost your husband his relationship with his daughter? Do you have any sense that you might have had anything to do with that? I do, but it's not about me. I did not break up anything. Every so you, your I, contempt I, for her and your contempt for their relationship has absolutely nothing to do with their problems. Me as a person, no. Her has a problem, she has a problem that we are married, yes. But and, and I and it has, sorry, I just, want, I just want to be really clear because I, I get you're not going to listen to this, but I just maybe I can get through to the husband or maybe I can get through the listeners or maybe I'm just talking to my hand, I don't know. But Rania, what you're saying is that your negative view of their relationship, your contempt for her, I have has no absolutely her. nothing to do with the negative relationship that has resulted after you came into her father's life. But Stefan, you don't get something right now. I had no contempt for her. I was very, very nice with her. And then suddenly she dresses in black and comes to our wedding and then looks like she is in a funeral. And the next morning, she does not even say hello to my mother in the, in the wedding. And then next morning, comes on and calls him and crying and say, I have lost you forever. So I have nothing against her. Every time they had a fight on the phone, I told him, please make it good again. I want to meet her. I want to do everything. I remember that time after they did not talk somehow for two months after the wedding. And then he called her and said, please come meet us at this place in the restaurant. And she said, I don't come meet your wife. And so on. So she has everything against me. This so it's all, I understand. So this song. So, so, so his, so, sorry, interrupt. So the, the hundred percent, a hundred percent of the problems in the relationship is hers and zero percent is yours. You've done absolutely nothing wrong. Against it's a hundred percent her, her issue. Against her personally, I did nothing wrong. I never ever talked to her bad. I never ever told her father to do something bad against her. I always even wanted to repair their relationship. Okay, so you're entirely that. innocent. You've done absolutely nothing wrong. And the fault is all in the daughter. Is that right? She does not even value her father. Just anymore. answer the question. You've done everything 100% right. She's done everything 100% wrong. And the blame is all hers. It's just a yes or no. The blame is 100% hers. There's nothing you could have done differently or better. I could have done something differently, maybe she had let me, yes. So, so basically you're saying there's nothing you could have done differently. There was no choice you could have made that could have been different. Do you think I, that it was worth, like, if you, could have, if you could go back in time, given that it was the tattoo that seemed to be the catalyst for this 
not speaking to to her father for a year. Do you do you think that the tattoo was worth it? Um. <laughs> well, I don't even know what the heck does the tattoo mean. Anyway. If you could go back in time and not get the tattoo, and he had a chance to have a better relationship with his daughter, would you go back in time and not get the tattoo? Um, I don't know if the tattoo means a lot, but it's for me, uh, if you had to have the tattoo or not, it would have been the same situation as now. I don't see the tattoo as, as a big, a big move or a big difference in but, the relationship. But, 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 but Rania, the issue isn't whether you see the damn tattoo as a big deal. You understand that? It, the issue isn't whether you see the tattoo as a big deal. The issue is whether his daughter sees the tattoo as a big deal. Could you, if you could go back in time <laughs> and do something to heal the relationship between your husband and his daughter by not getting the tattoo, would you go back in time and not get the tattoo if you had that wish? Yeah, if it would have made the relationship better, yes, I would not have had the tattoo. But Good. I'm positive it's not about the tattoo. Yeah. Uh, okay, you've said that also a million times. So uh, if you could put your husband back on for just a second. <laughs> yes, of course. Hi. Why is she doing all the talking here? I'm not quite sure. This is your... Well, you, well, you, you say you were a good father, right? So you raised a good daughter? Yes, I raised a good daughter. Do you yes. think that Rania, as she believes, is 100% right, did absolutely nothing wrong, and your daughter is 100% wrong in this situation? Yes, in this situation, my So then you daughter... can't have been a good father. Why? That's still... You no, 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 no. We're we, we done talking to you for a sec, Rania. Just, just hold your britches there. So, if Rania did everything right, but your daughter is prejudiced against Rania, or is negative towards Rania, then there must have been something deficient or wrong in, in your parenting to raise her in, in such a way that she would no. have this negative view of your, I guess, girlfriend, fiance, and then wife for no reason whatsoever when she does everything right and your daughter just dislikes her for no reason whatsoever? Well, you might be right uh, if I have done something wrong with my parenting, but I would be interested in uh, what have I done wrong? Hmm. Do you understand that Rani has some contempt towards your daughter? That she makes fun of her? in a public forum like this? Um, she she m mimics her whining and complaining and all that? Well, that's fine. That's okay. Yeah. That's fine? Opinion. No, it's not funny. It's fine. It's okay. No, uh, it, it, you have no problem with your wife doing that? No. Why? I, th I feel this is one of these questions that I don't even know how to answer. That, that your wife is publicly expressing contempt for your daughter and you have no issue with that? Uh, it depends on the words she's using. It was a tone. She, she, she mocked oh, her and portrayed her as a whiner and a controller daughter. and a manipulator and all that, right? Wait a, just a second. I want to answer this question before. If she, if she would insult my daughter in a very bad way, I would not uh, be okay with that. Oh my God, but man, she has insulted your daughter. She's mocked her, she's made fun of her. She portrayed her as a whiner. She's portrayed her as negative and prejudicial and, and hating her for no reason whatsoever. She says she's 100% right, your daughter is 100% wrong? And you think none of this is negative or, or, or nasty or destructive towards your daughter in any way, shape or form? That was not actually an insult, how Rania said that. Oh, you agree with Rania, then? That, that... No, uh, you don't get the full picture, because, uh, yes, um, yeah, how should, yeah. He, I was he, insulted he by her. Have, yeah. He did not have the chance to yeah. take part of all these situations we had, yeah. and I had with my daughter. After yes, I understand. I'm now, Rania has thrown your daughter under the bus again and said that your daughter insulted her, and again, she's 100% right, and your daughter is just mean. Yeah. So, where's, yeah. man, where's your loyalty to your daughter? Do you have no capacity? Listen, Rania, I'm sure you're a lovely person, but I guarantee you, you're not 100% right in this situation. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. And your, your arrogance in believing that you are is kind of jaw-dropping. 
You can be surprised. No, I'm oh. not surprised at all. I, I heard enough. I am guarantee you, you are not 100% right in this situation. And if you are 100% right, it means that you married a guy who's a bad father, which I don't believe. Well, wait. No, no, Rania, we're done with you. I just wanted to point that out. I just wanted to point that out. No, Stefan, I have to say something. Uh, that's uh, the questions you ask. That's the reason why we like you. Because you ask questions that nobody else asks us. And uh, that's why I'm honored to talk to you. And, uh, but in this situation right now, you don't get the full picture. And it's very hard to, to give you the full picture because you have never been in the situations. And uh, how shall I say that? Yeah, you, you, if, a is person, rich, yeah, no. if a person, <laughs> a person is arguing with you, and uh, you get the picture of the person. And sometimes persons arguing with you and they have a really bad manner in, a bad manner in this, uh, 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 what I want to say with that is they, they are negatively. They, they just want to destroy you. They just want to, they just want Wait, to take Wait, are you your, referring to your daughter now? I'm talking about my daughter exactly right. So your and daughter this, now wants to destroy you uh this is this is where your okay. loyalty has been after being a father for a quarter century that you raised a child that you're now publicly accusing of wanting to destroy you i was talking about a situation to talk in generally with people and uh, you oh have God, some man, no no how whipped are you are you kidding me no? this is your daughter she just wants to destroy you? Uh, do you no. hear yourself? Does it? No, she do you doesn't hear want any to... loyalty to your own flesh and blood? Do you understand why your daughter might have a problem with your relationship with Rania? That you're now saying that she wants to destroy you? That she's 100% wrong and you're, you have no problem with Rania mocking her and making fun of her? And I'm a good father, but I raised a child who wants to destroy me. Oh, man. I don't even know what to say. I don't even, I, I, I'm sorry. I, I literally can't continue with this conversation. I have no idea what to say no, no, at this point. If, if your daughter is such a horrible person, I don't know what to make of you as a father. If your daughter no. isn't such a horrible person, I don't know what to make of you as a father. But the loyalty deficiency here is truly appalling. You, you, you have a loyalty to your daughter. You should damn well have a loyalty to your daughter because she's your flesh and blood. You raised her and you cannot throw her under the bus as a parent. You cannot make her the bad guy to appease your wife. That is unjust, unfair. And I'm beginning to have just a little bit more sympathy for the daughter here. Stefan, you got me wrong. You picked up one point in my uh, statement, destroy, and you made a big deal out of it. it big, because I used this word and no, I checked, I, no, I checked with you as well, and you no, confirmed it. I have known that before I would have not used the word destroy. I was just explaining people that have negative feelings against you, and that was what my daughter had. She had negative feelings against me, and I couldn't understand it. So, uh, Parents I are never victims, man. I don't, don't, don't ever, don't ever try to portray me to me. Don't ever try to portray yourself to me as a victim when you're the parent, okay? You're the parent. You raised her. You instilled in her values. You modeled behavior to her. Do never, ever, to me, on this show, crawl up to me and complain that you're a victim of your own children. You are the parent. You set the tone. You raised them. If they have problems respecting you, that's on you, not on them. You don't have the right to play the victim as a parent. I'm just telling you that right now. And there are lots of studies that show that diversity decreases social trust in countries, in communities, in neighborhoods, and perhaps even, in this case, in families themselves. And I'm sorry, in order to retain my emotional energy for the rest of the show, I am going to move on, but I do appreciate the call. I do think it was enormously instructive. Okay, thank you.